transmute is a variant of mutate and transmute is used when you only want to keep the new columns that you create right if you remember in mutate it kept the new columns that we created but it also kept the original columns sometimes you may want to create new columns and just keep the new columns so that's what's going on here transmute flights gain equals arrival delay minus departure delay hours equals our time by 60 gain per hour is this okay now this result of this operation will be a table that has only these three columns i think that's okay so transmute is useful when you want to when you're interested in keeping only what you just created and forgetting everything else okay now with mutate you saw that you're using some functions right so for example the typical function the, the simple function we used of course were just you know, dividing and so on arithmetic operations but there are many other common functions that come in handy uh, so for example you can say uh, uh, you know departure time the, the quotient obtained when the departure time is divided by 100 right now what we are doing here is uh, the departure times if you look at the data uh, if you look at the table and if you look at the data you, you find that the departure times are things like 517 630 and so on actually the time is recorded in 24 hour clock right so 510 really means 510 a.m 630 really means 630 a.m right so the hours and minutes have been jammed together to form the time now suppose you want to extract the hours and minutes separately then obviously if it's 510 you want the hours which is five o'clock right so what you do is you divide it by 10 510 divided by 10 uh, divided by 100 is going to be 5 but you have uh, you know it's 5.1 but you lop off the point 0.1 and take only the whole number 5 okay so that is called the quotient on uh, in dividing which is also called integer division when you forget about the reminder you take only the whole number so if you do departure time and divide it by 100 and take only the whole number okay then what you're going to get for 530 is 5 so that is 5 a.m right so to get the hour component we use this operator which is integer division it's not a regular division regular division of course is just slash as we used earlier but this is this does integer division keeps only the uh, integer part of it drops in the fractional part okay minutes on the other hand what you want to do is suppose the time is 530 right it's 530 you've taken the hours out which is you divided by into the integer integer division by 5 now to find the minutes what you want to do is you want to take the remainder on dividing by 100 so for example is 510 you divide it by 100 uh, what is left over just the remainder is 10 that's the minutes right so 510 becomes 5 hours in 10 minutes okay that is uh, and that's the way if you want to if you're given a 24 hour clock time and you want to extract the minutes and uh, the hours and minutes this is what you do so this percent percent is the reminder it's called the modulus operator okay which is gives you the reminder on dividing this value by this value and this is called the integer division operator the quotient operator it gives you the quotient when you divide this value by this value take only the integer part of the quotient okay there are many other functions that are available with mutate uh, which you might consider using so here i'll just show you some examples okay uh, now incidentally uh, you know Suppose you create a variable x is 1 colon 10. So you're going to get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now, why did I put parentheses around it? I didn't need to do that. Right? I put parentheses around it simply because if you just say x is assigned the value 1 colon 10, then the result will be silent. Right? The value will get assigned to x, but you won't see what got assigned. Right? Nothing will print out on the console. So if you want something to print out on the console, you can do this neat trick of surrounding it with parentheses so it will do the job and it will also print it out for you okay so that's what we did so you get this result 1 to 10 of course as you expect okay now when you're dealing with uh, time series data for example stock prices and so on any time series data then many times you're interested in finding out the value which is one period lagged okay that is uh, you may want to compare the uh, you know values from 1 to n, time periods 1 to n, to the values in uh, time periods you know, uh, 0 to n minus 1. That is, you want to consider the values which are one period behind the current value. So, if you say lag of x, you're going to get 
the first value is going to be of course non-existent the second value is going to be what was first in the original the third value is going to be what was second in the original and so on so that's what you're getting here so you're getting the data lagged by one one spot okay so it, of course this is typically useful when the uh, when it, you're representing time okay so obviously because it's lagged in the second position you're getting what was in the first position of x the third position you're getting what was in the second position of x and in the last ninth tenth position you're getting what was in the ninth position of x and the last one is, is lost okay the first one of course you know there's nothing before the first element so you're getting an na okay so this is what it is similarly you also have another option called lead x which is you get the value not before but the next value so in the position one you'll get the value that is actually in position two of the original so this time you'll get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and not at all. Okay. Uh, so I'm just pointing this out to you in case you happen to analyze time series data. Uh, in this course, we may not actually use uh, lead and lag very much. Okay. But it's just good to have it in your armory so that you might use it if the need arises. Okay. So here we are looking at some more function. There is a function called cum sum, which is cumulative sum. Okay, so obviously, as you can predict, the cumulative sum is uh, the cumulative sum from the beginning up to a point. So 1 is 1, 2 is here, but it's 1 plus 2, the cumulative sum. So for every element, it's the addition of all the elements up to that element. Okay, so 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, that's the cumulative sum. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. And of course, if you add all the elements 1 to 10, you get 55. Okay, of course, you know, you can apply it to any vector. Here I'm just applying it to a vector of values 1 to 10. But suppose the first element was 2, the second was 100, the third was 25. It would still get the cumulative sum of all of those elements. Okay, similarly, there is also a cumulative mean. Uh, okay, so the cumulative mean is uh, the mean of, of the values. So initially, you'll get the first cumulative a mean for the first element is going to be 1. For the second element, the cumulative mean is going to be, since the cumulative sum is 3 and you've got two elements, the cumulative mean is going to be 1.5. Okay, so you get 1.0, 1.5 and this is 6 divided by 3 is 2 and 55 divided by 10 is 5. Okay, so that's how a cumulative mean function works. Okay, and there are many, many such functions. So here I'm looking at another function here. This is for ranking. Uh, so you get, uh, let's say this is your data frame, 1, 2, 2, NA, 3, 4, right? If you do min rank, then what you're going to get is the rank of each of the elements if it was ordered, right? So you're going to get a rank. This, of course, in, if it's ordered, then 1 is the smallest element, so its rank is 1. Okay, 2 is the second smallest element, so its rank is 2. And 2 is also the second smallest element, once again, since it's a duplicate, its rank is also 2. Okay, so this is the min rank the minimum possible rank so you get two but then you've already consumed uh, na of course will have no rank so na is going to come out as na three now has the rank four right because this is the first rank second rank second rank there are two second ranks so it skips the it skips one position and therefore this becomes four and this becomes five now incidentally uh, no matter what the order of these items was the rank will will come out according to the position of the numbers Okay, now in this case, in this example, the numbers just happen to be in ascending order. But even if the numbers were not in ascending order, if you change the order and try it out, you will still get the corresponding result. Meaning, wherever 1 is, its rank will be 1. And wherever the 2s are, their ranks will be 2, etc. Okay, uh, so min rank, of course, you can do descending. Meaning, if the items were ranked in descending order, what would be the min rank? Of course, this would be the fifth rank and so on. So, uh, so this is the fifth rank. One has the last rank because if you arrange in descending order, that's going to be the last element. Uh, these two are going to be the third rank, third and fourth really, if they're because there is a duplicate NA. And then this is the first rank, that's the second rank. Okay, so that's how min rank works. Uh, there is another variation of rank called dense rank. Okay, that is uh, here because there were two second ranks, the rank three was skipped. And this became 4. Suppose you don't want that, then you can use a dense rank. Right? So you get 1, 2, 2, but then uh, it still considers 
that only two ranks have gone. So this now becomes three and this becomes four. Okay, so that is dense rank where if, if there are ties, uh, then the rank positions are not skipped. Let's look at some applications of these new functions that we have learned. Okay, so now we are saying convert departure time and schedule departure time to show the number of minutes since midnight. Okay, but I already pointed out that currently your uh, time is in a 24 hour clock. So 5.30 a.m. is shown as 530, right? Now that's not a problem in itself, but when you have departure time and when you have arrival time and when you want to subtract between the two to find the flight time, uh, you cannot do arithmetic operations on time that are presented in a 24 hour clock manner, right? So instead it's better if we convert all the times to the number of minutes since midnight. Okay. Then you can do subtraction and addition and all those things you could do. Okay, so that's what this question is asking. Convert departure time and schedule departure time to show the number of minutes since midnight. This will make them easier to compute. Okay, so clearly we want to make a change into the data frame. We are not adding a new column. We are actually changing uh, the values in, an, in existing columns. So clearly whether we are adding new columns or changing existing columns, you have to use the mutate function. Okay, so you're doing mutate flights and we are saying departure time, the column departure time, replace it with departure time uh, integer division by 100, which gives you how many hours, then multiplied by 60. Okay, so that is the hour portion of the time converted into minutes. So for example, if your time was 530, 530, then you divide into an integer division by 100, you get 5. That is 5 hours since midnight times 60. So that will become 300. Plus the minutes portion, you take the, uh, the reminder by using the percent percent operator. Divided by 100, you get the minutes. So 530, you will get 5 for this. Multiplied by 60, uh, so that's going to become 300. And 30, 530, you divide, uh, do an integer, uh, you find the reminder on dividing by 100, you get 30. So the total will now become 330 if it's 530. Okay. Uh, similarly, same thing for scheduled departure time. Okay. So exactly the same. So notice the difference between the two operators. One is percent slash percent for integer division and percent percent to get the reminder. Okay. Or in mathematics, sometimes they refer to that as modulo operator. Okay. Now, of course, you're seeing here that there is tremendous duplication in this operation. And when you're dealing with times like this, maybe you're going to do this many times. So it might be a good idea to avoid the duplication. So you could do it like this. Okay, we are going to, uh, we are creating a new function. And again, we haven't discussed functions yet. This is just a foretaste of what is to come. So I'm creating a function which, given an input time, will find the hours and the minutes, uh, find, will convert it into minutes since midnight. Okay, so time converter is the name I'm giving to the function. And I'm saying it's a function which will take an input time like 5.30 a.m., which is just 5.30, 530. And then it'll, what it will compute is the number of minutes since midnight. Okay, it will do exactly the operation that we spoke about earlier. Okay, so now if you have the time converter function, then you can change your mutator to be like this. Okay, so you... We, Okay, so we could do this. We could say mutate flights, departure time equals time converter departure time. We're calling this particular function. So that will do the job. And then uh, schedule departure time. Again, we can say it's time converter of schedule departure time. It will use this function. Right? So we didn't have to duplicate this computation in two different places. Okay, another question. Compare air time. Right? Air time is one of the columns in our table. It tells you how much time the plane was in the air. And what they're saying is compare that with arrival time minus departure time. Okay. What would we need to do to fix this problem? Clearly, arrival time minus departure time is not going to work. Right. That's because both of them are in 24-hour clock format, like departure time is 530, 530 to represent 530 a.m. And arrival time is like, you know, 830, 830 to represent an arrival at 830 a.m. Right. So clearly that's, that subtraction is not going to work. So one thing we would definitely have to do is to convert them by using the 
uh, time converter that we just wrote right so that's what I've done here transmute flights I'm just for verification I'm saying get me the arrival time get me the departure time get me the scheduled departure arrival time and air times this is just as they are in the data frame in the table right now and then we are computing the air time in two different ways air time one is just the arrival time minus departure time as they are in the file which is clearly wrong and air time two we are doing the time conversion which is to take minutes since midnight and then do the conversion okay and then find the air time as the converted departure time arrival time minus the converted departure time okay now one would expect that uh, the actual air time will match this value that we have computed okay but if you actually do it and see then you you see that it doesn't match okay could be several reasons of course one obvious reason is that you've got time zone differences okay so obviously you know when you say departure time in new york and then arrival time in san francisco and the times are all recorded in local time zones so obviously the flight time is not going to match if you just do this operation, right? Because you, you have time zones. That's one problem. Uh, another problem is that sometimes flights take off before midnight and then land the next day. Okay? So, for example, they take off at, let's say, 11.30 uh, at night, which is 23 hours. And then they land at, uh, let's say, say six to, you know, 5.30 a.m. or something. Okay, so obviously, if you convert, if you directly subtract arrival, departure arrival time minus departure time, you're going to get a negative value. Okay, so you have to take care of that as well. Okay, so these are all some cleanup operations that you need to perform if you use this data. 